What separates a healthy marriage from a miserable one? Well, instead of just looking for good advice or even thinking about marriage counseling, although that is a wonderful thing, what if we turned to brain science to better understand how we can hack our way to a healthier marriage? That's what we're going to talk about in today's book review, The Four Habits of Joy-Filled Marriages, How 15 Minutes a Day Will Help You Stay in Love, Brain Science Hacks, that boost your emotional, spiritual, and physical connection by Marcus Warner and Chris Corsi. This is a marvelous little book. I started this book uh, like three years ago and never finished it, and it was on my shelf. And so I added it to my 52 book challenge this year. This is book five of 52. If you want more details on the 52 book challenge, I'll put the link in the description and show notes below, as well as my list. Of the 52 books I'm reading, you can get that at grahamcochran.com slash 52 books. I'm updating that. I need to update it a little bit more because I've added some more. But this is a beautiful, tiny little book. So it's mercifully short, which I love tiny books. Um, The shorter, the better. And I think more people should write shorter books. So thank you guys for writing an incredibly short book that's also very actionable. There are exercises in each uh, of the core chapters. So here's my big takeaway from this book. This is a fascinating book because I've, I've... done a lot of marriage counseling. I've been married for 18 years. I've read marriage books, and they all approach improving your marriage from different angles. This is the only one I've ever read that's approached it from the angle of brain science, and specifically the science around joy and joy bonding. And so let me just give you my main takeaway. That joy and joyful attachment is the most powerful motivator in life. So the idea that what motivates us, what actually intrinsically motivates us. You can say you want to have a better marriage. You can try hard to have a better marriage. You can incentivize your marriage in different ways. You can shame yourself into being better. You can communicate more. But what their premise is, is that what's actually going to motivate you to have a healthier marriage is joy. Joy is the, the strongest motivator from our these breakthroughs in brain science. So for example, One of the key discoveries from brain science, this is page 28, is that Freud was wrong. He taught that the fear of death and the desire for sex were the most powerful motivators in the world. However, the discovery of what they call the brain magnet has shown that attachment, specifically joyful attachment, is the most powerful motivator in life. Um, Going back to the intro, page 16, there's a concept they call the joy gap, and this is the foundation of this, the premise in the book. You may have heard that love is a choice. Strictly speaking, that is not true. Love is attachment. It is a bond you share through good times and bad. So you can choose to do loving things. You can choose to do kind things. You cannot choose to feel love. However, the more joy you build into your marriage, the more that feeling of being in love will stay strong and grow. They, they talk about something called the joy gap, which is the amount of time or the length of time between moments of joy in your marriage. And your goal is to shrink the joy gap. So for example, you have a great date with your spouse. You guys laugh. You have a lot of fun. You feel connected. Why? Because there was joy present. Then maybe a week goes by and you're busy doing life, taking care of the kids. Maybe two weeks go by and you haven't had joyful connection. The longer that gap between moments of joy, the more pessimistic you feel about your marriage, the more the narrative in your brain shifts around what you believe about him or her, and the more distance you feel. And a lot of times, the more hopeless you might feel when the marriage might actually be fine, but these feelings, which actually create a vicious cycle of wanting to be further apart, only grow. So the moment you can infuse some joy back into your marriage, and that joy gap is now shrunk back down, you feel connected. Joy is what makes you feel connected. So the whole book gives you four um, habits to build in joy in your marriage. And let me have the list of them here for you right here. Play together, listen for emotion, appreciate daily, and nurture rhythm. Um, And they give you exercises for each. And in short, what I loved about this book is that they gave you the habits to sort of hack your way to a better marriage. No matter where you are in your marriage, you can implement more play. 
And play can look like a lot of different things. It can be a shared hobby. It can be a date night. It can be a, a planned trip or vacation, which is something I love. I even love the anticipation of the trip. Like even booking the hotel or the Airbnb with my wife is something we enjoy together. Um, so infusing more play. But play can also just be watching a silly movie together or something like that. Play, Getting more play in your marriage it may not seem like that's going to fix a broken marriage. It's not going to fix everything. What it's going to do is going to change your brain and your spouse's brain and infuse more joy. And a joy is the most powerful motivator. And joy bonding is more powerful than fear bonding. And so you're going to feel more bonded. And all it's going to do is tip the scales in your favor. It's just going to start the cycle forward in a positive way, a virtuous cycle instead of a vicious cycle, which makes you want to serve your spouse more, be with your spouse more um, than Also, listening for emotion was a huge one. I don't have time to get into it, but realizing that there's the left side of our brain and the right side of our brain and how we interpret communication. And when you're listening to your spouse, you should listen right brain first, then left brain, meaning you should listen for the emotion that they're conveying, not the problems to be solved first. Hear the emotion, validate the emotion so they know that you heard their emotion and felt their emotion correctly before you offer any solutions to their problems, which is the left brain side. This gets me into trouble all the time because I'm left brain oriented, even though I'm a right brain creative. When it comes to communication, I just want to solve problems. And that's not what my wife wants when she's coming to me. She wants to first have her emotions validated and then we can solve problems. So that whole section on listening for emotion and they give you exercises to do that was like probably my area of greatest opportunity of improvement. (laughs) And so I'm going to be working on that but it's, a, it's an incredibly short book. There's no reason why you can't read this in an hour and begin implementing it daily with your spouse. The Four Habits of Joy-Filled Marriages by Marcus Warner and Chris Corsi. How 15 minutes a day will help you stay in love. Brain science hacks that boost your emotional, spiritual, and physical connection. Fantastic read uh, and makes things like improving your marriage seem actually doable. So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed the book. If you've read it, let me know in a comment below if you're watching on YouTube. Um, It's a fantastic quick read. And I hope you're joining me on the 52 Big Challenge. Let me know what your next book is that you're reading. And we'll see you on another review next week.